Today is the um, first of December. The first of December, Thursday, two thousand five, and this is the beginning of an oral history interview with World War II veteran Paul Percy, which is being recorded in audio and video at the Sepulveda VA Ambulatory Care Center and Nursing Home, which is a part of the VA Greater Los Angeles Healthcare System. Paul is eighty-five years old, having been born on October twentieth of nineteen twenty. My name is Becky James, and I'm going to be doing the interviewing and operating the video camera. Also present is Paul's son, Richard, right? Okay. Um, now, Paul, could you please tell us what branch of service you were in and during what years? I was in the field artillery, and uh, first they had to go be training. Right, but I mean, what, what was your unit number? That, the I was the, the uh, 49 field artillery, big battery, 49 field artillery battalion, 7th Infantry Division. And what was the highest rank you achieved? I was technically mixed rank as a corporal because they screwed me out of all, all, all the time because they bust the guys, put the same guys back. So what happened, at the end, this, uh, uh, first lieutenant, what he did, said, Percy, I know they screwed you up. So what do you want to be, a first sergeant? I told him, don't give me no higher than but corporal. So he gave me the corporal okay. stripes. <laughs> and um, where were you born? I was born in, in Italy. South of Rome, 50 miles south of Rome, a little town of about 5,000. But the population about 5,000. And where did you grow up at? Over there. I was almost 17 years old before we come back. See, my father came up to this country, him and four brothers, in 1960, uh, 1906. Then my father and one uncle went back to Italy and married two sisters. So my father came back over here. I was in December 1920. I wasn't even two months old. So my uncle stayed over there. And one of those rotten people over there in Italy, they stole my, my uncle was at Ephesus in Chip Tabor. And they stole the doggone thing. They stole the paper for him. And my, my uncle had to come back here a stowaway. He almost died. Oh my goodness. My father had to put him in his lap to feed him. Goodness. Now, um, when you were growing up, uh, or when you came back over here to the United States at 17, you said? Yeah, almost there? 17. What area did you live in? Uh, Alaquipa, Pennsylvania. Okay. And what were you doing just before the war broke out? Where were you when you heard about Pearl Harbor? I was, I was snowed that day. I was sitting in, uh, in my uh, kitchen over there. What was it? There's snow, that's all. And uh, did you know where Pearl Harbor was? Oh, I mean, we heard about it because people, uh, most of these guys that wanted to join the army go, go to Hawaii. Right. But I mean, what did, how did the people, how did you feel when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Was well, everybody upset? Well, what can you do? And to not see, now we want to get drafted and to go fight the war. Right. Now, um, how did you enter the armed forces? Were you drafted or did you enlist? Oh, I wasn't drafted. Okay. I wasn't even a citizen. Right. Now, um, were your brothers or sisters or anybody else in the service at all? No. My I, father? I only had one brother. Okay. My father was too old anyway. Right, he wasn't in the First World War then? He was in well, the First World War, yeah. Oh, was he? My father was. Was he in the Army? In the Italian Army. Oh, okay. He was wounded in the Italian Army. Oh, well, I guess the, the Austin and Carney, I'm carrying the. Uh, Okay, now when you got when you got your draft notice, where did you go for basic training? Uh, we went uh, to Fort McClellan, Alabama. We were we landed there in 1942, and uh, we got the training in Fort McClellan, Alabama. Then, after we did the basic training, we were shipped to uh, Fort McClellan, uh, uh, Camp Butner, North Carolina. Is that for maneuvers and additional training? Yeah, from a radio. Try to learn the Morse code, Morse code and everything else. But what happened then? I forgot about the Morse code. I had to use the uh, voice. Oh, okay. Um, now, how old were you when you went in? I was 21. 21? Were you married at the time? No, I didn't get married <laughs> until a year after the war. Oh, okay. Um, now, was basic training hard for you physically, or were you in pretty good shape? At 21. Oh, man, I was top shape. <laughs> you know, I work in a steel mill and pick up oh, okay. 350 pound uh, coil of wire and threw them up, up six feet high. 
one guy on each side, one in the back, and that guy swung it and then pushed it like that. Now, how much schooling did you have? I went up to the 10th grade. I was 11th grade. See, in Italy, in the 5th grade, you uh, the, you are in this country in the 10th grade. But what happened was this. I knew the, uh, the history, Rome, uh, the Italian history goes back to the Caesar and the rest of them. Uh, 650 pages I knew from one end to the other. Memorized. But then, uh, my what happened, my father was an alcoholic. He took me out of high school. So that was it. Could you speak English when you came over here? I didn't know one word. So that must have been hard. No, I'll tell you what. You see, the uh, English language, if you know a lot of Latin, it's very simple. The only trouble with the Italian people is the H, this and that. That's the only trouble. But the words, you get the, the basic on it. See, like I could, I could read the French, I can understand most of it, Spanish, because that's, that's the Romance language. Right. See? And uh, the English language got more uh, Latin words than any other language. Okay, now, um, as far as like basic training went, what weapons did they have you qualify with? Well, uh, in the basic training, we had the Enfield. Well, we were good shots. Okay. And where did you go after you left um, the advanced training? Where did you go from there? Well, but at Camp Butner, North Carolina for the radio school. And then from where, how long did you stay there? We stayed all day until, uh, until late December, then uh, we were shipped to Port Hood, California. It landed over there the 17th of uh, uh, 1943. And that was for more training? Well, yeah, we made a lot of beachheads. We landed in uh, uh, the island, San Clement Island or the, the battleships. See, you have three battleships with us, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and West Virginia, that shelled the daylight out of it. And we got so seasick, and the sailors were so seasick, they were pissing them out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But now, that, did, you that, know, did you know where you were going to go when you were doing these trainings? Did you know no, where you were going to go? We, no. Tell you about it. See, what happened? We were training. We had uh, four 105 howitzer. And we, they made, there was little hills off four road. We had to push, pull this gun up the hill on a sand dunes and what happened. We couldn't do it. I used to say, what the heck are they doing? Look, we got, we got a D6 uh, bulldozer, I mean a caterpillar, and they want us to, <laughs> to do that. But we found out when we had to island, my battery was the only battery made a hundred yards in. The rest we got stuck. In the beach. Is that because they had you practice all this stuff? Yes, that's what they practiced. But see, over there, uh, they got tundra, I mean, hundreds, hundreds of years of uh, tundra, and the stuff is like a steer manure. <laughs> <laughs> so everything had to be carried by hand. Pick up uh, three rounds, 105, a clover leaf, uh, with 175 pounds, with mud dumps in these. Oh my God. They dumped it. They broke that bad out of that bus. Wow. Now, um, how long did you stay at Fort Ord? Fort Ord, we left, uh, we left in April 1943, uh, board this uh, Dutch ship. Then we named the ship Perita because uh, it was a different name. Well, and then, and the, the, then the thing broke down beside. Really? We were left out in, out in the ocean alone, but the ship was pretty fast, so it caught up. Well, so, when we landed, uh, we landed in the two island, Massacre Bay. What happened? Uh, there was a big rock, well, maybe uh, 30, 25 feet from the from the beach, and uh, one of the infantry guy, that all the infantry, when the those Higgins boat, they hit. The, the, was so foggy you couldn't even see the front of your fingers. So what happened? Uh, all the guy jumped out and they all got, got drowned. Oh my goodness. Now, did, when did you find out you were going to the South Pacific? We never, they never told They never told you? <laughs> they never told you nothing. You what? You're out in, in the ocean, they don't tell you till a week later where you're you going. 
How did you guys feel when you were on the ship, though? What did you What did you do on the ship? How was your living conditions? Were they cramped? It was so rough, and so that feed does nothing but beans, beans, and uh, those uh, biscuit were raw, and I got so constipated. And those guys, uh, those Dutch people, those sailors, they were eating nice eggs and little sausages, and, and we were eating that junk. Really? And then uh, the ship was, the ocean was so rough, a few more degrees would have flipped over. And he, <laughs> he sat on a, t on a table, he grabbed your mascot, he grabbed your uh, utensil, you put it down, <laughs> that thing they against the wall. <laughs> How many? How did they have you sleeping? Did they have bunks, or how did they do the? You got, you got the four tiers. Four tiers, yeah. Sick. Everybody was sick. Seasick. Wow. So how long did it take you to get to to wherever you landed? Oh, I don't know. I got it written down, but I can't remember how many days. That's okay. Um, where was the first place uh, that you landed? Massacre Bay. You know that two island. That's called Massacre Bay. Right and now. Um, when's the first time you, how many, were you going in the ship by yourself or were you part of a, a convoy or how did, how did... No, we were part of the convoy but then the uh, ship broke down. Right. And then we were right and, uh, left high and dry so what happened, the ship was faster so that we'd be able to... Catch up catch to up. the rest? Yeah, we caught up with them. Okay, when's the, um, now what was your job exactly um, at that time? A forward observer. So you go out and scout for the artillery? Yeah, so we, I carry F a radio, which the radio uh, battery was uh, 96 pounds. Oh my goodness. So I carry F a radio, the other guy carry, carry the other uh, the batteries, okay. 48 pound each, plus four fuel packs, a quarter pound, a quarter mile of a 130 wire, plus telephone, plus hand grenades. Oh my goodness. You look, you look like a jackass. <laughs> Well, that's a lot of weight to carry, um, and you're not a very big man. I mean, that must have been well, hard. I, was, I shrunk three inches. Well, still, I mean, I'm always, I mean, I was strong. Well, working in those steel mills, I guess. Now, um, where's the first place that you guys saw combat? Right there in the two island. Was it right when you landed? I mean, right there? No, the, the, the Japanese. It was smart. Let us come in. Uh, some of the infantry got killed. A few of them scattered. So what mm -hmm. happened? Uh, we went forward and uh, we stopped at this place and uh, we had one guy by the name, he lives in the uh, uh, east of uh, uh, his name was Belaska, Mexican guy. So what happened, he had to take a, a crap. <laughs> so so uh, two islands mounted in a little valley. So he was, was right in the center of the Valley taking a crap, <laughs> and all of the Japanese opened up in water. <laughs> he ran like <laughs> Oh my goodness. So we had him and another guy, see, and uh, it was me, uh, Corporal Wessel, George Wessel, and uh, this uh, Bell High School, and this uh, John Hilton. And that guy, he was a lazy son of a gun. He couldn't do nothing. So they sent him back. And this John, uh, uh, this John Hilton, the one down the beach, and looted all the the uh, officer trunks full of liquor, and he was drunk all the time. And they didn't do anything to him. No, he was drunk all the time. He stole all everything. So then, what we went, we moved forward. We had this uh, George Wesson and I, and this. Uh, Lieutenant Crystal, Jewish guy. So we slept on a hog, 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 I forgot the name, it's a hog mountain. And uh, slept overnight, they put, he slept at, uh, we call him a fart set because he had, he had, he had two, two bags, one inside the other. So every time he fought, he gets so itchy, it was so funny. <laughs> So, so it was just I, you guys by yourselves then? No, then we, then uh, one year, next morning we attacked forward, and what happened? We we called uh, fire for the uh, the Japanese against the Japanese, and what happened? And the, I saw two Japanese on top of the snow on the Pond Evo, below Pond Evo, and I asked the 
because he had the only one that had binoculars. Binocular. I didn't. So what happened? The Japanese, they were Japanese, but they didn't do nothing about it. See, then the infantry tried to take engineer hill, couldn't take it because they were they were getting massacred. And this uh, lieutenant he didn't know nothing. So what happened? That the uh, Japanese opened up with the motor and uh, shot us with two uh, knee motors five feet from our head. It exploded. We didn't get a scratch. We got sick from the uh, the uh, smoke from the oh, I forgot the name of it. I got a written down. <laughs> of uh, we got sick from the the, 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 uh, the, the smoke. Right. So. That stopped. It, that thought we were dead. So what happened? Uh, we moved forward, and uh, the inf our infantry was climbing this uh, uh, black mountain, and uh, and this lieutenant, he, he thought, you know, oh, always like that. That thing, me, hey, I'm it. He told George West, I tell you what, the infantry were crawling up there. I mean, very steep, and uh, so we leave the Percy over here, and then uh, with the radio, and we, you take the, the wire and telephone, and we, uh, he's going to really, see, we talk to him, and he talked to that, uh, and the guy said, Judge no, Mercy, no way, he just said, no way, and that dog on Japanese had a, a trench uh, through the mountain, he was blown the guys from behind with 37 millimeter cannon. And he punched them just the same. So then what happened, that after a while they sent me back and I started walking down to the battery and uh, the Japanese had the 70 millimeter uh, howitzer and the guy was coming up. So that he figured when we meet together that the shell would explode. But we fooled him, we slowed down. So we didn't get hit. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. Now, um, can you just take us through a little bit of, of where else you went and, and after that battle? No, after that, see, what they did, they dug, uh, put Quonset out, and they put all the ammunition, and uh, they sent the split battery, so, so many, one guy, uh, too many guys go to the beach to work, the other guy uh, used check camera to, to build the, for the tents and the, for the concert art. And they worked that day like that of us, seven days a week, 12 hours a day. And we loaded over 70,000 55 gallon drums beside. My goodness. They worked that day like that of us. What did you um, do for food? Were you just eating C rations and K rations or what? K rations. <laughs> And, and what did that, what was in a cave, what, give us a typical example, what was in a regular meal? That's what it was, a little bit of cheese, but then they gave us a sea ration, uh, which was a uh, hash and, um, and uh, pork and beans. What was the weather like there? Rain, oh God, the rain. I told you, you got a cup of coffee, by the time you, get, you start eating your meal, the cup was full of water. Oh my goodness. And we were outside, we had the... A rain hat, rain pants, a rain, a rain jacket. Now, do you feel that your training helped you? The training that you had gotten, did it prepare you for the, the South Pacific? Well, you see, the division, see, the Japanese, they were well prepared. What happened, they uh, had this General Brown, they fired the first 36 hours, they fired him because he was no good. The division was trained for the fight in Africa, but then they switched to go to the illusion. Well, so, we sent to guard duty after this. If he, wanted, if he wants to look at that and refer that, he not good to Well, I'm, I'm, going, I'm following you now. It's okay. He, he, he said that the sergeant sent you to guard duty. No, oh, then uh, what happened? Uh, this, I, no, see, what happened? We won the war, not the old, not the old army guys. They were a bunch of bums because look what happened to the Philippines. They left all the ammunition, all the food. They didn't even take the ammunition of food. That's what. And this guy was a Irish guy, ignorant, a little uh, child with a dual fixed bayonet or the fist. You know, 
our our town is a valley up the mountain. Look at the American corpse, and we couldn't find any. And it was supposed to be a guard duty the same night. But what happened though? The Japanese made a suicide attack on an engineer hill. The 13. Uh, uh, the 13th engineer and the 50th engineer fought them hand to hand and stopped them. So there was about 50 of those uh, Japanese left that blew themselves up. And I was one of the guys that had to pick them up and put them in a cart to take them to Massacre Bay. This guy, so he was busted, got kicked out. He got kicked out. He was an old army man. Because, see, back east, I was making oh, 75 cents an hour in a steel wheel. Those guys were making nothing. Because in Oklahoma, war, war. no factories, no nothing. See what I mean? So we had to join the army. So we didn't get the best. Can you tell me about guard duty uh, with this Frank Dunbar guy? Oh, oh what happened to this guy? Uh, another Irishman. So what happened? I go on guard duty. I put uh, on top of Engineer Hill now. We got an uh, eight uh, cot inside our tent. So I go on guard duty, I, uh, I do my duty, then I wake him up and the stupid kid, he was so filthy, he had everything laid on the floor, carbine, and what happened, his foot, hit the trigger and cut, shot himself with the foot. Oh my goodness. That's what, that's what, you know, 10%, 10% of these uh, soldiers were worthless. So, and then uh, what happened, uh, this same sergeant, what he did, he became panicky. He started screaming like a crazy maniac. And uh, one soldier from a serves battery shot one of uh, the corporal in, in uh, battery. That guy looked like a, like a movie story. Oh, what a good looking little Jewish guy. Uh, like a, uh, what, I forgot the name. Gary Cooper, he looked like just a little so that's what they fired them too. They kicked them out of the battery. So then we left. Okay, well, talk what about when you left the island? About when you left the island for Hawaii? About oh yeah, we left, the, we left the, the island for Hawaii. Made us thirty, take thirty thousand, one hundred five rounds. Take them down the beach. You gotta go inside the squat the dance, Take them out. Pick up thirty three each run. Each uh, uh, tripod, uh, three rounds with 175 pounds, oh uh, us show off, put them on our shoulder, you know, <laughs> get them out. Then what they did when they done, got done, hey, got to pick them back. They got a lot of ammunition in one over there. And I said, you know what, how now are you supposed to win the war when you got, you got this dog guard by the screwballs running around? <laughs> oh my goodness. Did you have his notes? If you want to refresh your yeah, memory, feel free. Here. Okay, this is where you landed at Kiska Island. Well, yeah, Kiska Island, uh, we were supposed to invade Kiska Island, but the 17th Infantry, in, uh, which uh, the Queen of the Bell, and uh, supported by the 48th Field Artillery, got landed over there, but they had the, they had the we were missing on the radio, they had a battle between uh, the 70th Division and the Canadian because they were green troops, we weren't. The 10th uh, Mountain Division and the, the Canadian troops. So we were, I thank the Lord they left before they escaped the Japanese. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Okay, August 28th, 1943, USS Julian. Uh, then uh, we, took, we well, took okay. a trip to, went to Hawaii, see. So we went to Hawaii and, uh, uh, those uh, white guys over there, hey, green on! So the infantry guy put all the Japanese flags and shut up real fast. <laughs> so, what else now? Um, um, so, you did an uh, um, amphibian landing on the island of Maui? Oh, yeah, we had we done a lot of uh, invasion in uh, Maui. Practice the invasion landings? Maneuvers. So what happened now in January, uh, we left. What, what, what about when the plane fell between the barracks of the Air Force when you were in Maui? 
Well, what happened? We had the, I was called Hot City. The, the bar barracks had the, this, uh, you know, the one to stuff these for insulation, uh, the three inch thick, I can't remember. It's anyway, uh, so we left for Kwajalein when LST took a long time. We had a good, uh, uh, LST 243 was very nice guys. Very good, very good. So what, we landed over there January 31st, and we went, we got uh, all our guns. See, yeah. For the LSD, we had ducks. You know what amphibious ducks right. are? Okay, we had uh, one gun on each ducks plus a uh, crew on each ducks. So we, we worked out daylight, night and day, breaking up duration. So when the first of the February, we opened up. So we had 48, with one, uh, our 31st inf uh, field artillery that changed to the 105, they got a person not fit for 155. So we were opened up 12 rounds a minute. And they told, uh, they told this guy, uh, uh, the uh, newsman, don't go below 40, 4,500 feet. He did, bang, though, blew him up. So the, uh, the Navy, Hot child to those guys, you know how much you know how much of a projectile projectile of uh, one of five, one five five weighs ninety six pounds, and the uh, one of uh, one of five only thirty three pounds. So what happened? Three guns blew up. I don't know how many guys got killed. So we, we, each, each battalion five, four, I don't know how many thousands about. 15,000 runs a piece. 12 runs a minute, you say? 12 runs a minute. Then they dropped down because the guns were a bit too hot. Wow. See. Then we uh, and uh, the same guy, this friend, uh, this uh, Irish guy, uh, he, uh, <laughs> he put in, he, during the night, he put in his carbine inside a muscle of 105 so it would get wet because a little. <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> now, the way the 105s made, it won't explode. Feel so many yards away from the gun. <laughs> so when, when he opened up in the morning, my first sergeant told me he did the of, this carbine was stuck in the trunk of a, a palm tree. <laughs> <laughs> the same guy that shot himself when he did Yeah, the I'm same guy. And, and another thing, in the, in the late day, he froze. So I, I think that comes later. So what happened now? He would left. He got aboard this LSD well, two twenty. What about what about um, you got, you got a dive bomber with the air tower? Oh, uh, this uh, the American Dantas dive bomber man, the good here a dying. Better, better than the Stukas. Of course, before we went in, you know, <laughs> people were right there when the uh, dive bomber the the, uh, the, uh, the radio tower. So what happened now? Uh, we got aboard this LSD well, hold two on a second. You, you went and picked up all the dead Japanese on e, what is it? E, EB Island? E, e, Ibu. Ibu. Okay, that's what the name of the island. So what happened now? Uh, uh, we got aboard this LSD to go back to Pearl Harbor. Now this two the LSD 226, they were a bunch of screwballs. They had so many penalties, it wasn't even funny. So what they did they took all the dog on a machine gun, uh, motors, ammunition, duds, uh, live ammunition, and duds, and uh, so they put us on deck. So I got, <laughs> got all those damn guys. I mean, they thought they were going to bring off the gun to stick home. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, see, they got punished. So what happened? But going back, they put our 50 car machine gun beside them because we didn't trust them. Now, at this time, have you seen any other combat other than just artillery? Have you been under small arms fire or anything like that? Well, we were uh, we were uh, under uh, small arms fire, but we didn't pay attention to small arms fire. Yeah, that was nothing, right? Was it? Okay. Now, now we trained. Uh, they sent me to. Uh, okay, what's this? The uh, third infantry. Oh, the third infantry. Oh, no, no, see, then we got uh, credit because they got attached to us. The third infantry uh, uh, regiment. That took an talk, so we got credit for an talk. That's become our division. 
then we uh, we trained they sent me to training for a non-commissioned officer in uh, this place in the was uh, Kaha uh, was three Kaha uh, by the beach. That's where I got sick. See out uh, cooks were very good, but this guy in seventy differently. There at the dock of pork, they made me so so sick. I was uh, uh, what happened? I could move my bowels. Then they put. I went back to the battery. They put me in the hospital and they pricked my fingers for a whole month. They didn't know what the heck was going on. So what happened? I really I went back to the battery, which I got better. And we tra we were ready to go for for the for the Philippines. We were supposed to uh, capture, uh, make a beachhead in the, uh, what's the name of it? One small island, they were supposed to make a beachhead and then turn, turn it over to another division. What was the name of the island? Um, I just, I'm at the part where you had to guard all the stuff and you laid a lot of phone wire and you couldn't take Oh a yeah, pineapple. what happened is this too. You're working over there in the field with the telephone, big wire and everything else. And then if you swipe, stole one pineapple, $50 fine. Just to show you what kind of... That's no pineapple for you. So what happened now? We were supposed to take the silent... Did you find it? So I'm, I'm at, you left Pearl Harbor... Um, August what? August I mean, 27, 1944, yeah. and you went on a, uh, and went to Maui in a maneuver when you returned oh, that's to Pearl Harbor. Uh, go September. Did go you September. repeat this? Hold on. September 15th, we arrived at Equinox Island. This is a repeat of the other ones. Okay. Um, you were transferred to LST-693. In October 10th, you left Manus Island? No, that's before that. Well, I was in a transport. Before I went on transport, then we stopped at Manus Island. We were supposed to take, uh, yeah, the island was yet. Yeah. We were supposed to make a beach at the yeah, island, and then uh, turn it over to the some uh, Greenhorn outfit. So now we landed on Manus Island. I climbed a big coconut tree. I used to be able to climb below. <laughs> I look around, everybody took off. I knock off, but that's done. <laughs> Everybody's gone. So uh, we, we bought the LST and uh, 693. No, I, I can't remember the number. This is transferred to LST 693. I, October 10th, we left Mass. Now, what happened now? We got invasion of Leyte. Okay, so event Leyte. The LST carry the M, uh, Amtrak. You know what I am to Right. Okay, well now what happens is this. I'm on a third wave. This, this uh, Amtrak uh, battalion was very good. The, our tank battalion was lousy, but this, this uh, Amtrak battalion was very good. So I'm, I'm on a third wave. He was maybe uh, 75 feet in front of me. You know, once one shell hit smack in the sand and killed them all. So, now the, our guys, they're going like this, so no more casualties. Okay, uh, so you got here in the morning of October 20th on yeah, 1944, my your birthday. Oh, wow. You got a so, new lieutenant, Woosley, told yeah. you to shave because you had two-day-old beard. <laughs> well, see, this in the middle of the war, he's worried about shaving. Well, uh, see, what happened with this, he was an Irishman, nice guy. He was the, so he used to belong to the division, but they sent me, sent, they sent me to another division uh, to Became a uh, second lieutenant. In fact, I met him after the war. Uh, we were union uh, for road. So what happened? He told me to shave. I said, "Uh, -uh I'm not going to shave. I had two days beard." So, so I had uh, this guy uh, Patterson's name was. Uh, my buddy was there, Patterson. We landed in Leyte. Now, I was about uh, oh, 15, I mean, really 15 feet in front of him. And a motor shell hit him right between the legs. And they started laughing. Percy, you have blood, he's, uh, <laughs> you're a bloodthirsty son of a son. So, 
So, what about this Jewish guy that you see? Oh, this no, uh, I could remember his name. The Jewish guy. That's the one is was a communist first class, because when we were in Hawaii, anytime we go for a, a walk, he talking about uh, Russia, how much he done for us. His Marov is dead in this and that. So I saw three Japanese guns. He wouldn't pay attention to me because you see, we, we had to go because we were citizen troops. The 96th division was Greens. So I went across me and him. This lieutenant, me, Patterson, and other guy, we went up this little hill. It was a, a like this, and had the holes, you know, be able to observe. So what happened? I saw the Japanese guns, and uh, he didn't want to pay attention to me. So he knocked my three or four tanks up. So next morning we came down, and I see this uh, guy from the 96th Division, the machine gun, the Thompson machine gun. He said, oh, the gun don't shoot. He said, let me see that. Grab the gun. I said, I look at the Talk about trees and I said, I told you better take the damn thing apart and fix it. So what happened? I went back to the battery, but my battery commander said, oh, Percy, oh man, we, we were we were gonna use grips to, to fire because they were that cut so close to us the night during the night. Use what? Grip shells. The rounds the grapes. The damn thing got so many <laughs> so many nails in there. That'll shoot forward. Right in front of you. I don't know, understand what grapes is. The shells, it looks like a bunch of grapes. When it, when it hit, man, he, you mow everything like a weed. <laughs> oh, you, you like canister? Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. So what happened now? Now we got this uh, sergeant. Uh, uh, what about what about this pillbox you were in? That's the one on top of you. What's oh, better? Okay. okay. So what happened? I got this uh, nice Irish guy, his name is uh, Sergeant uh, Carey. And this guy was so smart, he had the highest high about 175. And what happened? They wanted to make my officers. Uh -uh. And that guy went all through the war and became an electronic engineer, correspondence course. Wow. He went all through the war, correspondence course all the time. A man was on the ball. I said, no, I don't want to, I don't want to. He used to teach the officer, but see, I'm not, I don't want to be one. It says the infantry took up air, all the airfields? Yeah, all the, all the infantry took all the airfields, yeah. Didn't the Marines, they tried to give the Marines credit for some of that, God didn't knows they? Nobody, I'll tell you later. So what happened now? We, uh, one, uh, see, MacArthur gave a, really played dirty on us. So we went to bye-bye on the other side of the beach. So I was on top of the tower. 20, uh, 16 foot tower, and I see. Uh, B 25. I see the uh, uh, B 25, 25 B 25 Ormok. Ormok is about, I don't know how many miles in the ball, say about 40 miles. Of course, I had a 20 uh, uh, scope, and I could see the, I couldn't see the uh, ships, but see the two of our planes were on fire. But uh, that sank all the ships, it, 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 uh, destroyer, and uh, in three minutes, they sank all the ships, destroyer, and transport. But then it took the Navy three hours to do the same job with 300 planes. Did the same thing. So what happened now, we had so, uh, weather was so bad that uh, some destroyer got sunk. That was a typhoon. We were lucky we were inside this uh, warehouse, we didn't get wet. You said that you were in the tower and you saw two Japanese destroyers coming oh, in the Oh, then uh, what happened? You. Two Japanese destroyers, I was on top of the tower, two Japanese destroyers came within a thousand yards from us. Now, I've got, uh, 105, the range is only 12,500 yards. Mm -hmm. And the destroyer got 14 miles. So if he, I told him, if he had the 155 long time, we could open up. So I asked Colin Finn, see, <laughs> what do you want to do? You, you want to open up on them, you know, and see, you could, you could blow the first one, you could blow it right up. But second one, get out of range and shell the hell out of it, kill all of us. Yeah. So then we, MacArthur, what he did, he sent us no, no, no reinforcement, nothing. So he moved uh, to this little town, Taklo, 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 what it is. It says you moved, uh, after about a week, you moved north to a little, a little hamlet yeah. called Demolin. 
Dam Damilon. Damilon. So what happened? It was me, the sergeant. Uh, no, he was no, he was no more sergeant because he got busted out and made it back by a German guy. In fact, he died young. Found out. So what happened? He asked. Uh, they asked. Uh, now this uh, ten guy, uh, he, uh, platoon sergeant, was in, uh, behind us. It was just me and him up in the field. Uh, 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 called commodities in the hot, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the potatoes. You know that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So what happened? He asked, after 34 days, he said, "Who wants to go back to the battery?" I said, "I'll go back." So battery was only 500 yards behind us. No, battery was 500 yards behind. After 34 days, you said? Huh? You said after 34 days? 34 days. So what happened? Uh, was uh, one uh, battery of uh, Marines 155. That's the only time they were there. So, what happened? And this, this guy you're with, his name was Tony Pinelli? Oh, or yeah, the same thing. The guy sorry, Tony Pinelli. Techno, techno sergeant. Because he got two stripes on the bottom. Right. So, what happened? Uh, that's saw this. Uh, we were, I guess, the 16th Japanese Division. They had us surrounded. They had a, 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 a bamboo thicket full of them. So they said that squad out, but they're stupid. They became good buddies with after, after the war when we met over in California. And uh, instead, called the infantry to get, get, you know, kill the, uh, the uh, Japanese uh, squad. They didn't do nothing. So what happened? But, so go back. What happened? All the ammunition they captured in the Philippines that were shot at us with the American guns. The captured. This is about. This is at the battle. Uh, I was asked. I was asked to guard the rear. So I dug a slit trench about. Okay, 30. let me finish. Now, what happened now is this. Uh, so the stupidity of the Americans. No. It's a Japanese plane flying on top of us. Us walking around with the Filipino girls, everything else. So we only had uh, one, one battery plus uh, one battery of the 57 and another battery, uh, oh, another battery. And uh, instead, call the infantry, go after the dog, I think. So about two or three o'clock in the morning, they call us, couldn't even see your fingers. They blew three of our guns. I'm in the back. This uh, sergeant, tech sergeant, in charge of all the guns. His name was uh, uh, Tom Burns. And he said, Percy, let me in, let me in. I said, ah, you couldn't get in. I see, I dug a, a sit trench like this, this deep. And then I put uh, two runs, uh, uh, 105 uh, boxes, I fill it up with dirt, and I fill up that much dirt on top. I said, ah, you couldn't get in. I said, you better get your butt back in. <laughs> They take care of it, otherwise you're going to, they're going to court martial you. So you know what? That gave him a broad start. <laughs> what? Right. Not only that, but what happened? His son called me uh, last year from his uh, university of Pittsburgh. So I told all the shit we were in. <laughs> and what we were in Hawaii, the same guy, and just the stupidity. Oh, you know, when uh, Italy surrendered all that, oh, the men without a country. I said, what a stupid man this guy is. A bunch of Oklahoma ignorantes. That's all. But they know the eternal city in the Bible. <laughs> so, so what happened now? The Japanese plane hit, uh, shoved the hell out of us, but didn't hit, hit us. Hit the uh, next little river. A little brook, that's all. So, next. When the plane wasn't around, flying around, instead the uh, us open up, shooting down, uh uh. They weren't allowed because the Navy, that was the Navy's fault. They, they could have shot a lot of those planes down before they hit the ships, the kamikaze. That was a big mistake. See what happened? Ladies made the, you got 10,000 yards flat, then you got a little mountain, and they come from the other side of the mountain, they come up, and drop down, brrr, man, with this big, Bomber goes so fast, 
he's gonna shot him, he's uh, gonna put machine gun, uh, put machine gun on top of the hill as soon as he came over from the other side that killed him. So. Okay. So, um, oh, then what happened? Did you and George Wilson went to the front line where the Japanese attacked? Huh? You said you and George Wessel went went up to the were at the front line when yeah. the Japanese attacked. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. So I went back. See. So but what happened next? He was hit in the head with a Japanese sword. Oh, he, then no. what I after that? See the whole Japanese 16th division against our one battalion of infantry under strength, a three battery artillery, in the Marine uh, outfit for the. Oh, that, that's surrounded. And that night, uh, we went to uh, meet uh, this uh, Corporal Osborne. In fact, his son is uh, uh, a doctor up here in Santa Barbara. He started digging like crazy. Oh, no, no, no. We want you over there. You dig like, in three, in two hours, at the, three fucks, so not one. We were so damn tired. It was being funny. But then we had this uh, nice guy, I thought he was French, but he's a German, Mormon, real nice guy, uh, uh, Captain Grass. He was on top of the god, uh, uh, one of those uh, uh, coconut tree with the telephone saying, don't you guys run the phone? Then see it's Japanese all, all underneath me. <laughs> this was Captain Greasy? Gracie? Ca Captain Grass. That's how he pronounces <laughs> So then we move up to Warmock. Uh, the, the 77th Division advanced uh, all the way to Warmock. That bore our. Now is this is this every day that you're in combat? Then basically, oh, yeah. like every single day. Then what happened? We learned our uh, abstracts. You know that 75 millimeter uh, officer, and they uh, took Warmock like lightning, and they lined up on the beach over there. There comes a whole bunch of ship Japanese. Uh, uh, ships over there, the sky opened up, <laughs> bang, 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 Nisso, Nisso, Nippo, 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 bang, bang. So the, it was like, that made them like a sieve. <laughs> shut all the damn things. And uh, you it couldn't even dig the fuck. Dig a fuck, so I got one of those barrels, I put it in, inside over there, so I, I used that. So what happened? The, the battery commander was, that's the guy, he wanted to give me the, First sergeant said, oh, I don't want it. So what happened? Uh, he made me say, almost Christmas time, oh, you want to fight the guard? See, yeah. Stupid me, I put my butt right against the wheel. When I pulled the trigger, I was lucky to break my back and go and recoil. Oh. <laughs> so what, the Amtrak took on the, the ships? Oh, the, the Amtrak, the, you know, the, that carries 70, uh, 75 mil, uh, millimeter officer, the Amtrak. So they blew the the heck out of the ships? Yes, yeah, nice ships. Wow. Point blank range. Oh, my so, goodness. And then uh, what happened? We, uh, they took us out of there and uh, we went to stop and buy a bye and, uh, and there was a promo marshal over there. We were all loaded with uh, everything, angry. <laughs> the promo marshal was a major, but he had kept his mouth shut. <laughs> we just got the line. And, uh, we had this guy Harry. He's from Texas. He was a tough son of a god. So we left, and uh, we went to the other side, and we, we went to to uh, Luzon to help another division. See, the, the 38th division helped us in uh, to a Luzon division in, in uh, late in, but they went to Luzon over there. So we were in this uh, LCI. Is that LCI? I'm, I'm getting down there. Oh, well, 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 that's said, I can't remember. I kind of written time. So, I just. What happened in January when you left Ormac and stopped at Bay? Bye bye. Bye bye, yeah, that's what I talked about. What, what I told you about the. You got told you about the, uh, the problem, so you got some eyes shot. <laughs> so, what happened now? I find this one gallon peach. Cans, you know. I mean, they want no no fruits whatsoever. So, so we open it up. We start eating the doggone uh, peaches, and then we put the 
the dried milk, you know, condensed milk. <laughs> and we took pigs. <laughs> I even brought my cot to go to Galuzo, and I didn't want to sleep on the ground. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so what? So you stopped at Pai Pai, and, and there was a, ma there was a, a major, major yeah. the previous marshal. We all got drunk, and Eddie told the major off. <laughs> and all the MPs because we were all armed to the <laughs> teeth. Those policemen the tip of the marshal, man. They cut you some slack because you guys had just come out of combat, right? They were being nice. Well, that was good. Okay, then January 29th, you landed north of Subic Bay? Yeah, Subic Bay. Not, uh, in, uh, in Subic Bay, as in uh, um, Luzon. Right. That's where the Japanese landed, one that attacked us. What was the heaviest fighting you'd come under so far? Which one was the heaviest? Well, in Okinawa, was the worst. Was it? Okay, what about the Leyte Gulf on February 14, 1945? Like, okay, you just went to Leyte, and then in March, that's a big, that's more than a month. What did you do in Leyte for more than a month? Well, we get uh, we're getting ready to, to go to, go to uh, Okinawa. Okinawa. So we went to Okinawa. So we left there uh, April 4, 1945. Uh, no, we, had, uh, we landed with uh, Amtrak, no, no fire, the Japanese let us in. So the 17th Infantry cut across uh, one, the Marine, the two Marine divisions are on our left, and us, the 7th, and 96th, and the 77th. No, no, 7th, uh, 77 and 96th. At uh, 27, was Aishima, what's his name, of the field. Mm -hmm. So that turned north and we went all the way across. We took Kadena, uh, the 17th Kadena airfield, and another airfield, and then all the left flank was all the airfield, the, our division took them all. Okay, so but since they blew up your guns so many times, what did you do? Huh? What did you, it says here that they blew up your guns, you started using hand grenades to booby trap the guns at night? Oh, in the late, what I did the later, after blow up guns, what I did, I'm the first one to start this. I told them, this sergeant, I see the first SOB run away, I'm going to throw a hand grenade right on top of them. I got the hand grenades, I cut the cutter pin, straighten them out, I set wires, so the Japanese would not sneak on this. Right. So what happened in Okinawa now, the, the whole our division all started doing the same thing. Got to have Bensonberry, Bonsonberry, and all those, uh, you know. I'm the one to start the whole works. See, on Okinawa, I had, we had 50 car machine gun four. We had uh, three more machine guns from the infantry that gave us 30 caliber, plus carbine. So we had, I had uh, a carbine for myself, a carbine snooper scope, and a carbine to shoot grenades. Oh, wow. Plus, uh, I had two bucks, 48 grenades. <laughs> so, what, what happened when we attacked? Uh, three days later, we tried to take Chunk Hill. We opened up, and what happened? The Japanese had more guns than we did. Okay, it looks like we have to stop to change the. Okay. okay. Thank you. Just a second here. Oh, no. Okay, there we go. Now it's working. Okay. So, what happened now? The Japanese have so many guns, you could not believe it. You couldn't see them. They were all in caves. They were railroad tra tracks. They had an 8-inch gun that shot up to Katina till the last day. So we uh, tried to advance, but it got pushed, pushed back every time. So what happened now? I'm up the front line in the... Uh, you were George Wessel at the front line? Me. George Wessel, and uh, we were in the foxhole. See the hills like this, and uh, we dug like this, so the the shell wouldn't hit us, but the shell would come over our head, this far up from the top, and go down below, kill the inf infantry guy, ammunition, everything else. So we had the other stupid uh, Jewish guy, the poor guy died. So what got killed? So what happened? He fired him one mission, and he, he went out short. He went like this in a hole. 
and uh, one of the, I think one of the guys I met him, uh, he just died now, uh, uh, Frank Piorso from San Jose, he was different. I didn't know it till after the war, I, when I was in the reunion. He lost his arm. The stupidity, they make, they make these doggone guys, uh, got little education, they make them officers. You know, I don't know, so, uh, and uh, one of the guys, uh, even the guy, they said to Bounce Berry, you know, and, and the, the sergeant was crying. He walked right in that zone. Bounce Berry, he got killed. See, Bounce Berry, he got this eye and then explode. And the sergeant was crying, crying. You stupid, uh, what are you gonna do? Then, then uh, we went back to the Berry, see what I did, uh, uh, like a trench. But this deep and wide, and they put a pop tent on top. It was in the front of the guns. So every time you, the guns open up, it's like somebody smacking against the wall. You know, the, 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 you see that big round ring around it? It says that this is on the same hill the enemy bombed during the night. Oh, this one. Uh, no, one this bomb is fell 25 feet below. Oh, that's after that. That's Skyline Bridge. That's Skyline Bridge. See then what happened? Uh, we had this guy, a uh, uh, servant guy, a real nice guy. Every time, every time we went online, he always got the Halilo, Halilo, Nick. Even Sergeant uh, Carey, the shell led up over a thousand yards the other side, but it's not the dog on the ricochet and back to him. And over there, they were using the same as First World War. The Japanese hit one hill like this and exploded on the other side. So, that. 320 motors, 320, 1,000-pound projectile, like a choo-choo train. Mm -hmm. they, had, they had so many guns, you wouldn't believe it. So now we were on Skyline Ridge, and, uh, and uh, Moss, the guy's name was Moss. We like it. couldn't even dig a foxhole in the hillside like this. So we dig it off just to sleep. And here comes uh, this uh, second of that, I don't know, I didn't even know his name. So. The infantry guy is not even uh, 15 feet above me. He said, This guy goes, Hey, this, this is the Louisiana, this is what replacement, Louisiana uh, maneuver, pow, 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 three rounds mortars. I told the son of a gun, I said, You know what, you're not an F uh, rookie. You won't last a week. You know how long it lasted? Two. You know, he asked my first sergeant, uh, my uh, sergeant Carey, say. A sergeant, who's this guy? He's an officer. No, he's a private. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? Uh, a couple of nights later, they had about three thousand Japs, and uh, you could see them. They couldn't fire him because they were too close to us, and you got dead zone. Right. You got dead zone until you can touch them. So what happened? And uh, they, they were going to attack us, but. Uh, they're backed off. I don't know why. So, next night they came over with a plane that dropped four 250-pound bombs, one 25 feet in front of us, right below us, and three above us. Knocked the machine gun down, and that's all. Nobody got hurt. Are you talking about the old man upstairs? <laughs> oh, my so, then we uh, advanced. There was another another place. It was. Uh, uh, what about where it says I saw a Japanese soldier at the bottom in a flat land with a big radio? Oh yeah, then uh, what happened? I tried to kill it. See, I had a carbine, right? Very four. So what happened? Uh, I see this Japanese with a big radio crawling, with a big radio. I tried to get him. I grabbed the M1 from him, his power and shoot, shoot, and grabbed. You know, I see. I already missed by six feet. I must about 2,200 somehow. Oh my goodness. Because I was atop the hill. Right. You know. So he's. <laughs> I come, try to get him with the machine gun. That dog was taking him shoot 300 rods. Right, right. The damn thing, the barrel was worn out. <laughs> that barrel was worn out. Did you ever get him? No. But see, then what happened? We uh, advanced and went to Yana Baru. Yana Baru is, was a city, was destroyed altogether. <laughs> Nothing would happen. And I saw that some of those Navy bombers, thousand-pound bombers, that didn't explode. So what's this? We advanced to the top of the hill. 
when more infantry were being trucked in. Oh, what, yeah. What, what, what happened? Uh, what happened? To, we were, Four Navy fighter uh, planes. We, were, uh, we advanced, you see. Well, uh, now, well, four, Navy, four Navy planes, two or three or four, I can't remember now. And uh, everybody laughed and said, I bet the third come back, start straving our uh, guys in our trucks. He called the dog on him, get this, this guy out of here because we're going to shoot him down. When you see the pilot, it was so low, you know. One of these uh, hot chicks, <laughs> he thought. So now what happened? We, uh, we went to this place up on the front line over there. And I could see all the Japs below us. I told uh, Sergeant Kerry, say, can we shoot? No, say we, we can't. That zone. So while I was watching like this, uh, this one of these uh, new uh, rep replacement, he shot, he shot at the barrel right on the seal. I said, you stupid sword, so. But then I see a whole bunch of Japanese on, on the left flank attacking with hand grenade and uh, and uh, and a holler, and everybody opened up and they retreated real fast. So then uh, what happened? And, was like this with the binocular uh, left. And five minutes later, this uh, Mexican guy with the binocular, with the binocular like that uh, shot him right. That uh, shot him right through here. Uh, see, the old man upstairs was looking for me. So they went down below. There was rain, high rain and rain and rain and rain. And uh, we were inside. Uh, what, what happened? We took the cat, uh, that uh, dead uh, body with the uh, I mean, what, bones. We took it out and we went to sleep inside. <laughs> So two infantrymen said, oh, can we get in with you? Say yes. And you know what happened? I met him several years in California. The poor guy, what, uh, what, it was one Mexican, one white man. That guy committed suicide. He was a drunk and committed suicide. Mm -hmm. So now, what happened now? We got the foxhole and we had this kid, Bruce. That kid was so skinny, his armor looked like a, like a skeleton. <laughs> he was from, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota. So now, and uh, all night long, bang, bang, bang. So what the hell is going on? We got a punch on top of the, of the coast of it. So uh, when we moved over there, uh, this uh, young boy, who, this Japanese sniper, uh, machine gun, was shooting from where? About 3,000 yards away, top of the mountain. But he could not use a mortar because it would hit our troops. So what happened now? Uh, I'm like this. And all, all at once, the, see the slugs, machine gun slugs right beneath my legs, you know, yeah. And then guys all the Percy, Percy. And I, I look, I look, I look, and what happened? I could see the Japanese had the smokeless powder. So I see like a fog, a white. And uh, I spotted, so I brought it, they brought in a 57 millimeter uh, uh, regardless, regardless rifle, and that's a like, got him. Wow. So, and then uh, we advanced and we took, uh, you know, when you see the, the, the escarpment with the tanks, uh, those are our tanks, uh, and the infantry, not only using the tanks, they're using the hoses that brought those, uh, the bomb on top, <laughs> pour, pour inside, the, inside those caves and burn them out. Yeah, because there really wasn't any way to get them out, though. Yeah, so that. What's this tomb you shared somebody with? Huh? Tomb. You went to a shoom? A tomb? A tomb. No, a tomb. T O M B. A tomb. That's a. That's a. Oh, you bury that. Yeah, so you shared a tomb with someone. Working. So yeah, a uh, guy that was a bricklayer that recognized you later on. Yeah, that's the guy I thought I was talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, then we had fans. Further, then we had this uh, nice lieutenant, that lieutenant uh, uh, Reardon. You know why? He's talking about good guys and bad guys. That guy was so, he never pulled a rank on anybody. He was the first one making me fire a mission just by myself. So he went out and said, okay, I fired 105, then 155, and it bounced off. So we were going to use the 8 inch. If that didn't take it, we were going to use a battleship. 
but that's it. I had to do it no more. So, no, um, we have about 20 minutes left, so you, we still oh, have yeah, covered done, Okinawa. So. Done, uh, before that. so what happened now, we uh, advanced to the end, and, uh, and uh, the army, all the every division opened up. Of course, we were at the, at the end of the tail. We got General Steelwell. It's called General Steelwell. He was a general before he went to China, that stupid Chinese Shanghai shack, feeling like heck. And uh, he, so uh, he'll, he'll, he'll uh, 89, they didn't go up there. What about this one? You, you saw three motor shells coming at you. Oh, yeah. Well, well, that, what happened at, uh, at this guy uh, from uh, Virginia? In the uh, like a baby Ruth, uh, some, uh, I mean, a uh, real nice guy from Virginia, and, uh, and uh, he was with me. And uh, I'll look up in the air, I'm there, and I see three more shells His name was Curtis. coming. And I jumped from here, I'm maybe uh, 15 feet away, and the dog went, went land, shell, uh, shen, uh, the shell landed on the guy across the leg. And this guy, Percy, Percy, Percy. I say, I'm here. I saw them coming. So, you see how the Lord works? So that's what happened. So uh, now, we the bottom of the hill, when the, uh, everything, the general, the, the Japanese general committed suicide and, and uh, couldn't go no further. And what happened now? Uh, I threw a whole bunch, I thought they were Japanese uh, soldiers, but uh, I heard this moaning, so I threw a whole bunch of hand grenades for that. Now, when you said, like, um, that one guy that lost his foot or, like... The, the shells are just... Got now, were there medics close to you that they were able to, or did you guys have to help out the guys before oh, the medics got there? can't do nothing. They can't do nothing. They got, they got, that's the infantry. You got the old medics. Yeah. So what happened now? Uh, uh, we went back to the battery. And uh, no, we didn't go back to bed. We were up in the hill. Uh, there was moonlight. And to see the Japanese soldier, see, I opened up. Uh, uh, one shot to the carbine, I got him, and the other guy with the machine gun opened up. So next morning, I went down below looking for him. And he was dead. Or, uh, but he never, my bullet must have got him. So uh, I was going to take this, the. Uh, Watch, you know, the guy said, infantry guy said, no, you take the sword. You, I take the watch, it was already our sword. You know what happened? Over here, when this guy from New York, he fixed my my shower, he stole my dog sword. After 50 some, uh, uh, many years. Oh my goodness. And he's lying, he lies like hell, you know, you, uh, what should you call it? Mm. Okay, the guard duty thing. Was this in Korea? Guard duty? Well, what happened now? Was this Korea? Yeah, what happened? Uh, all the, for two points, I had, she had seven bombs, the battle store, plus all the overseas. I had 83 points. For two points, I had to go to Korea to disarm the Japanese. Now, we had 92% replacement. 92%! <laughs> a bunch of greenhorn. They couldn't find a, a way out of paper bag. So what happened? During the he would pull guard duty, the Japanese goose stepping. Goose stepping. I was scared. That's the first time I got scared because if the Japanese would, would fight back, forget it. And they got me so doggone drunk because the peach uh, the peach uh, what they call it? Brandy. <laughs> this Indian guy, red. Red leaves, I think his name was. I got me so damn drunk, I couldn't stand up. <laughs> That's now, it. Now, did you see any individual acts of bravery where somebody might have gotten a medal for something, or did you see any? Well, no, you're too, you're too far behind to see that, because see, you go with your uh, commanding officer. See, if I was a different thing, I wouldn't be here, I'd be dead. Because the Japanese, every time, every time they brought tanks, they wiped out uh, tanks out with a gunny fire. We lost 200, 250 percent of our tanks. 
Now, did you ever hear about how the war was going in Europe when you were over there in the South Pacific? Did you ever get any news or? Oh, you, when Roosevelt died, that's all. That was it. But see, all the, all the guys that fought in Europe, they were training. They had to train them again because the way the Japanese fought. Right. You no. Know, oh, one other thing. What happened to all of us over there in uh, Yanaburu? There's three Japanese coming down, running, and uh, I got a cover in my a carbine, and I said, bang, 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 but I don't know whether or not I got, I got him. I was going to go after them, but the sergeant said, sergeant clearly said, no, stay in. He couldn't even pull up, the, oh, there's a Mexican. He couldn't even pull up their pillow, pistol out. Before he <laughs> I was already got it? I said, man, forget it. So uh, then I heard machine gun across, so they, I think they got him. So you you forgot to mention in Hawaii that your division was the only division at the Yeah, my division was the only division put up a, a parade for Mr. Roosevelt. Wanted to see it. I left. He looked for their wife. We should have never put for him at the fourth term because he was a sick man. That sold us down the drain in Russia. Now, um, when you finally were able to get points and, and came home, what did you do uh, when you first got home after the after you got out of the service? Had I it helped, changed? Uh, no, I had my brother uh, knock the wall down and wash it. Yeah, I worked my butt off for him, and he was he was a, what you call a sloth, lazy. That's it. When did you move to California? 1952, uh, September. See, I went to carpenter school in the, in. The, West Pittsburgh. First was uh, uh, the other, yeah, the bigger town, uh, and then uh, West Pittsburgh for 24 months, s seven, uh, five days a week, and uh, seven hours a day. I worked full time besides, because I was be able to do it. Because I'm thinking about creative upgrade, whole head creek. So I worked four to twelve. And I get up uh, about uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, get a little breakfast, take off, drive 40 miles one way, and 40 miles back. And uh, I rest about another half an hour, then I went back to work. For that, for 24 months. So, why did you pick, when did you meet your wife? Oh, I knew my wife way before. In high school. Oh, you knew her before you went into oh, the service yeah. then? Oh. oh yeah. Was she your girlfriend? Was she your sweetheart when you were in the service? No, I no? no. What happened was this. Let me tell you what happened. I had this girl. I used to go with this girl. I didn't love her. I never told her I loved her. So what happened? She said, if you come on my wedding, I'm going to stop my wedding. So she kept what, what happened. Now, her husband didn't get drafted until after the war, so he wasn't, wasn't drafted. And she kept calling my house, and I wasn't home yet. And, uh, what happened? She, I wanted, to, she wanted me to go see her down at uh, her friend's house, and uh, she wanted me, uh, her husband couldn't have any children, so she wanted me to uh, have a kid with me. I said, uh-uh, goodbye. <laughs> how do you, something to say, I don't want. So, so how, that was it. So how, how long have you been married now? Fifty-nine years, and I have. My goodness, and how many children do you have? Four. You really want to see the pictures of them? Yeah, we'll put the pictures in. And you have grandkids also? Huh? You have grandkids? Great grandkids. Wow. I got four grandchildren and five, uh, five great uh, grandchildren, four great grandchildren plus two uh, uh, adopted uh, great grandchildren. Now, do you stay in touch with any of the guys that you were in the service with? Do you ever talk to no, any of them? No, there's only one guy over here. We, we, I didn't even know him. Uh, he lives in uh, Burbank. Uh, most of the guys from Oklahoma and Texas. I went to a lot of reunion. Right. Well, see, I was in the reunion what, two years ago, and I was the only one in the 49. Mm -hmm. In fact, I got a picture of him, not of me, because my hair was so dry. See, my hair used to be always uh, like silk, real thin, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, um, did you, how long have you been coming up here to the VA hospital? Oh, I'm, um, I long, uh, I was away in 1966. I lost 11 months of work. That kicked me out. There was one guy. Uh, he's the one that. Uh, what happened? Uncle Sam sent me to school to become a doctor. And he we go, gave us the shaft. He kicked me out. So I couldn't get my papers back because my papers were in Pittsburgh. So I had a heck of a time. So what happened? 
I was working with water and power. Uh, then I, I was I spent months and months and months in this hospital. But still, the government still won't give me won't give me nothing. Twenty one dollars a month. When did you become a citizen? Oh, let me tell you what happened now. When we after we took Washington Island, got me Italian, French, German, English, Irish. You name it, every nationality under the sun, they took us, the, uh, February the 24th, took us on Honolulu to become all citizens. <laughs> so she had two good, uh, had two good uh, officers, uh, the Lieutenant uh, Reardon and Lieutenant uh, Vandenberg. I mean, real guys, they treated me with a nice big steak too, everything else. You know, they were, see, they were some good officers and some rotten ones. Now, what advice would you give a young person going into the service today? What would you tell them? I have the books, and my kids, they didn't read it. Now, I hope they see this. What did I tell them? You see, I went through heck trying to get what, what had come to me. And there, there, this Marine wanted him, my son, my son, to change to be a Marine, see, forget it. See, my wife lost her brother at the one that focused straight. He was graduated, you know, uh, school teacher, and got X six months to teach uh, younger kids. And what happened, he got killed, they went to Fuga Strait. An helicopter crash. Seven got killed. And he, the government let him go. His private hired a private outfit to find his body. See what I mean? See, they used to abuse you. So what happened now? I was in a VA hospital from 19, uh, 1950, uh, six weeks in 1972. Uh, and then I went back to work for about a week there. I had to go back to the hospital again. From then I didn't work anymore. But then what I still, I had to get a lawyer to fight the VA. So I go over here, won't do nothing. So I went to Washington, D.C. Finally, in Washington, D.C., they done something about it. Otherwise, forget it. That's terrible. Now, is there any um, any uh, songs from that era when you were in the service? Is there any of anything that sticks in your mind about uh, what the, the, your favorite songs were, or anything like that? Or? Oh, the real Red the Rose of Texas. Okay. Yeah, the Red the Rose of Texas. No, all oh, those nice uh, 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 Oklahoma and uh, Texas songs. And uh, one last question about. Um, Religious beliefs. When you were in the service, did they have? Did you have access to a chaplain, or? Well, we had one chaplain. He was a drunkard. Oh no! <laughs> and uh, in fact, what happened is, when they blew our guns out, uh, we got one man killed. This uh, he was put. Uh, he was a uh, Portuguese, and uh, a couple of guys got wounded, and uh, they even he, he, he treated one guy who got wounded. He treated them. They gave him a bronze star. He talking about what about the all the all the observer. Nobody got it, nothing. He got nice. Uh, this guy was a Mormon, real tough guy. He was so nice, and uh, they didn't give him no, they didn't give him a star, no uh, bronze star, or anything. Well, well, we'd like to thank you for sharing your memories with us oh, today, thank and you. it's because of uh, people like you that we're free today. Well, you see. Uh, uh, my, my, I got those books, you know, the division books. They don't want, they don't want to read. I'm the one. See what happened? I used to go to the bathroom and start reading the encyclopedia all the time. Then the daughter say, "Hey, daddy, how about it?" I said, "Go read the encyclopedia." Oh, you already know it. Huh? <laughs> Get it. Well, okay. Well, thank you very much. Oh, you, thank you.